Uh, folk were a lot wiser in the olden days. I think, J.D. Donnelly, you're correct, because I think since the Second World War, we've been dumbing down. Uh, my grandfather was in the 11th Battalion, the Cameronians. You're live in Scottish Funnin. Who is that? Hi, Scotty. It's Jonathan. Jonathan, how lovely to hear from you, sir. How are you? Fantastic, thank you. Fantastic. Yourself? Oh, listen, this, Jonathan, I could not be fantastic with this show. Are you not impressed? Yeah, you know, the, the calibre of the guests this evening have been fantastic. Uh, the comments have been flowing perfectly, and uh, some really intelligent chat for a change. Well, good chat. Come to, and you, now it just come got even better, because you've come on. Well, thank you. Yes, I know, you know it's, um, it's always a pleasure and an honour to be on the show. And, Lovely um, to have you with you us. Know, uh, yeah. Sorry, sorry, carry on. No, no, I was just going to say very quickly, Jonathan, uh, here's Mark saying, my grandfather was in the, the 11th Battalion Cameronians, the rifles through the Gorbals in Glasgow. Now, the Cameronians were the Scottish rifles, and the Scottish rifles were started by a guy in, I think it was 1643, or maybe later, 1683, can't remember, called Richard Cameron. He was a minister in the Church of Scotland, and they were being hunted down for holding conventicles on the hillsides. And the Cameronians were the only, they were disbanded in, I think it was 67, 67, 68, and they were the only regiment that bore arms in a church because they were there as sentry guards, and they would post the sentries, then they would come to the preacher and say, uh, the service may begin, Your Reverence. No enemy is in sight. Fantastic. And you know that? These, these soldiers <laughs> who protect the, the cities, the towns, the country in general, you know, a lot of them are forgotten about now. But to be honest, you know, I think we need to, to get some of that military spirit back. Yes. And uh, we're, we're facing a war in many fronts right now, financially, you know, with our, our friends over in Russia. You know, we need to, people to take action. And, uh, you know, what I find right now is not a lot of people mourning, not a lot of people doing. And I think what we need to do is, you know, Scotland's always been a very proud nation, but we've, we've lost our way. The people have lost their way. And, um, you know, as you see, you mentioned churches, where church numbers are dwindling slightly. You know, people oh, don't yes. Have to you know, so I think what we do is, for every game day, for people that aren't contributing, they need to get off their, off their bottoms and get into a church. We need to look for opportunity and need to provide. You know, we've got many potholes, we've got, you know, gardens that need done. I think we need that working spirit and everybody, you know, doing their bit. You know, a lot of people have to put their hand out and take that they're not given. And, uh, you know, end it's taking money from the government, from me, from uh, my fellow taxpayers. I think it's time that, you know, they're out, up in the morning, half past six. They go and learn how to fill potholes. They learn how to, you know, um, do laundry, they do all the stuff that you know that the society needs. Stuff They're that's needing stuff. done. So are you advocating, Jonathan, that we go back to a, a form of domestic service? Very much so. I mean, you know, you think you, um, the, the people are very easy, you know, they sit there, they're sitting watching satellite television, uh, they're, you know, they're sitting there enjoying cakes and candies and all the fantastic things that this nation has. And, they're, you know, there's people like myself and yourself out working and all I'm saying is, you know, I, I'm driving down the street. My wheels are quite expensive. It's a big pothole. I don't mind contributing to somebody's house. You know, let them pay. Now, Jonathan, I'm going to ask you a very personal question, and you don't have to answer it. Uh, you know, you can say, I'm not prepared to answer that, Scotty. But oh. you're a very wealthy man in terms of uh, cash and investments. Um, and <laughs> Uh, you know, it's great to talk to you on here. You know, we 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 like that because a lot of us aspire to be you. And I know you will just say it's all through hard work, and 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 that's true. But um, I'm thinking you would be somebody who would be in a position if we were being threatened with a nuclear attack. You could probably buy yourself a place in a bunker. Now, well, I don't want to give too much away, but Scotty. But, but I, I hope you don't mind me asking. I hope you don't mind me asking. But would you yeah. would you be willing to?
to buy yourself a place in a bunker. Now, bear in mind, please, I'm not crying. Please don't think you need to answer this if you don't want to. Yes, well, I mean, to ask Scotty, you know, I, I tend to find that the threat, not just of, um, of of nuclear weapons and bombs, but also just people writing. You know, the, the peasants, as you say, sometimes they're not getting enough in their handouts. They, they can't have enough more cigarettes and drink. So we, we about a year and a half ago, purchased a, an old body up in the Highlands. Now, it's um, it's a very safe place. It's very remote. And, you know, I think in, in a scenario where, you know, anything happens, we can retreat to it very quickly. Uh, within within a couple of hours or faster by helicopter, wow. um, we, can, we can be safe and secure. Um, it's, got, it's got plenty of facilities, fresh water. Um, you and, know, and, and I suspect, and, Jonathan, again, I'm not going to pry, but I, I, you have access to a helicopter at fairly short notice. Do you have your own helicopter? I, I, I actually got a part ownership in a helicopter. Right. As I say, it's, so uh, you could, you could call that happy. up fairly sharpish. Yeah, I mean, to be honest, I say, you know, everything, you know, smart people plan. What yes. do they plan for, you know, what they're doing today, what they're doing what they're doing for the holiday plans, and also what to do in nuclear disasters. Now, um, as I say, we, we've got a plan where it's, it's very well put together, and there's a, there's a process. That includes the immediate family um, who will be identified quickly, and um, we, we, we pull them into the, into the copter and get them up to safety. As I say, so it's, yes, listen... Everybody should have a plan. That's right. what it's all about. Right. But, um, as I say, you know, we, we've got food prepared. We've got water. We've got entertainment. We've got everything ready. A great collection of books. Um, I hand chose some wonderful authors. You should have to sit underneath um, underground. For I hope you've got access we, uh, to the internet for the Scotty McClue show. Well, listen, that, <laughs> that's, you know, I think if, if anything else fails, Scotty McClue is there to entertain and uh, you know, also educate. Yes, well, the if, the, is, if know, the telly and the radio yeah. go down, McClue's here. Exactly. One of the things, you know, there's, there's very, you know, I think just in general, the McClue show just, it gives people who have, have limited intelligence access to opportunity and understanding. Uh, you know, they come on, they, you know, thankfully so many people find you now via TikTok and YouTube. And, um, you know, it helps them lead better, smarter lives. And uh, as I say, I know, I know sort of following you with you over, over a number of years. Um, I think we should use order. that as one of my uh, mantras. Uh, think better, think smarter. Very much so. You know, I think that, you know, the Scottish government should look at McClue and say this, this should be part of every child's education because it doesn't only stand for, you know, uh, being a better person. It's a lifelong uh, commitment. Lifelong so, learning. And I mean, uh, Jonathan, as you know, I'm one of the biggest learners on the whole thing. So I'm learning all the time. I'm learning from you, from all the callers, from all the, 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 the material we're looking at, et cetera, et cetera. Exactly. You know, McClure is an institution. I see it as an institution. I see it where people come, they learn, and it, it makes them want to be better people. And there's not much of that around anymore in Scotland. You know, Scotland, um, you know, as you say, the average person in the street then uh, when these low cost supermarkets, they're more than not enough money, they've not got this, they've not got that. They don't think how can I have more money? How can I pay my electricity? You know, with it with McClure's intuition and you know the just the the, the positive vibe, this you know, saying to you, listen, you're up in the morning, you've got an opportunity, you've got a choice. You can sit there and just moan and complain, or you can do a job, you can make other people happy, you can make your family proud. And you know, that's just instilled in McClure, you know, just just from the beginning and right through, you know, whether you're young, old, whether you're feeling a bit down or you're at the top of the world, you know, there's, there's, a, there's something in McClure for everybody. And I think the government need to, you know, see that and seize the opportunity. You know, put the broadcast it to the nation, broadcast it into the houses in the morning. You wake up, you know, McClure positivity. Before you go to bed, you know, think what you've done that day. Think, plan your week ahead. Plan what you can do for not just you but your family, your community. Because as they say, we see communities crumbling right now. Um and everybody's waiting on an answer. So we don't need answers off you know third parties. We just need to know in our heads that it's absolutely and we do very often what's called the early bird in the morning, about maybe six o'clock. And then uh, we very often do one in the evening as well. Exactly. And you know it's, it, the commitment you've put in. It's just unbelievable. You know, morning, noon, and night, 
you know, you committed to, you know, helping. And some 